Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Board District 5's first virtual town hall. My name is Jackie Goldberg, and I'm proud to represent Board District 5 in LAUSD. Before we begin, I would like to take care of a few housekeeping items that will help you enjoy this meeting more. Buenas noches a todos y bienvenidos al primer foro virtual del Distrito 5. Les habló Jackie Goldberg, muy orgullosa de representar al Distrito 5. Y antes de comenzar, me gustaría repasar algunos asuntos generales. First of all, you can Primero listen nada, to this meeting. Pueden escuchar esta reunión. In English or Spanish. For Spanish, en click the interpreta interpretation button at the bottom of your Zoom window de and then select la Spanish. Parte inferior de la ventana de Zoom y en español. We have our wonderful interpreters from the LAUSD Translation Unit Tenemos a translating everything that's being said. Todo lo que se está diciendo. So again, if you're Así at a computer nuevo, si and want to listen in Spanish, escuchar en español, click the interpretation en button de interpretación at the bottom of your Zoom window and then select ah, en la parte de abajo inferior de la ventana Zoom y luego selecciona en español. Así que primero que nada pueden escuchar este webinario en inglés o en español. Para español hagan clic en el botón interpretación en la parte inferior de la ventana de Zoom y luego seleccionen en español. Tenemos a nuestras maravillosas intérpretes de la unidad de traducción de LUSD traduciendo todo lo que se dice. Así que de nuevo, si están en sus computadoras y quieren escuchar en español, hagan clic en el botón de interpretación en la parte inferior de la ventana de Zoom y luego seleccionen en español. If you have any trouble switching the language to Spanish using the interpretation button, you can si also use your phone to call idioma, into our Spanish audio line, which is already up and running. The number and access code for that are on the invitation for this event. Si tienen algún problema para cambiar el idioma al español usando el botón de interpretación, también pueden usar su teléfono para llamar a nuestra línea de audio en español. Ya está activada. El número y el código de acto están en la invitación para este evento. Second, Segundo, you might notice that si this town hall is a bit este different from other diferente. Zoom calls you ah, may have been on because only our panelists are visible and audible. As we go through our discussion, though, we invite you to ask questions by clicking the Q and A button at the bottom, bottom of your screen. Botones de preguntas y respuestas we'll en la parte inferior de su pantalla. We'll get to as many Entonces, questions as we can when we get to our Q and A session. Please keep your questions brief. That way we can answer as many as possible. You can write your questions in Spanish if you'd like. That's no problem. Also, don't worry about spelling or grammar. We'll get the point of the question. If you're joining us by phone, unfortunately, we will not be able to take your questions, but you can email any questions you have that aren't asked by others to bd5info at lausd.net, and we will get back to you in the next few days. Before I go over how this meeting will unfold, I want to encourage everyone who hasn't yet, please take a moment at the end of this meeting and complete your census form. Now, we will hear from our guests in this order, and after we've heard from every single one of our guests, we will then get to your questions and answers. The people speaking today are Kristen Mondi, the Regional Health Officer for the LA County Department of Public Health, Jose Huerta, Superintendent Local District East, Roberto Martinez, Superintendent Local District Central, Cheryl Hildreth, Superintendent Local District West, Allison Yoshimoto Tauri, Chief Academic Officer, LAUSD, and Anthony Aguilar, Chief of Special Education, Equity and Access, also at LAUSD. All right, now we're ready to begin. And please, Kristen Mondi, tell us what's going on with the pandemic that we're dealing with. 
Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Um, and again, thank you um, for inviting Department of Public Health so that we can share some um, vital information um, to your community. So tonight, I'll be briefing you with the latest information on the novel coronavirus or COVID-19, which I know is of great interest to many of you. I know that um, you know, COVID-19 has many people in our community concerned about the risk to their health. Today, we reported 399 new cases in Los Angeles County, which brings our total to um, 10,854 cases. All of those cases have been asked to self-isolate, and we've also asked their close contacts to self-quarantine for 14 days. While we have been talking about the positive impact Safer at Home Order has had, and there's a lot of messages on national news about reopening the country, I want to remind everyone that we are not yet on the other side of this. We all have worked together in difficult and creative ways to reduce the spread of COVID-19. But we must keep at it to avoid a surge in cases that overwhelm our hospital, because we don't want to lose ground. For Los Angeles County, that means we must keep doing what we're doing, staying home, physical distancing, using cloth face coverings, and self-isolating and self-quarantining. These tools are essential now and will remain essential until we have therapeutic medicine and vaccines. However, we know that modifications will come as we um, continue to slow the spread. We are planning for our recovery, knowing that for us to do so, certain pieces must be in place before we can safely relax our safer at home order. When we relax the orders, the people will be out and about, and we know that um, there will be additional cases of COVID-19. So what we need to avoid is having a surge of cases and deaths that overwhelms our healthcare system, that causes more tragedies, and forces us to be in a place where we must reinstate all of the restrictions. Our goal is that once more places become open, we do not get to a place where we must close them again. As we are learning more, guidance is changing. COVID-19 is a new virus and everyone, researchers, public health workers, and the general public are learning more and more about the virus and how it spreads. There is increasing evidence that people who are infected but are not having symptoms can transmit COVID-19 to others. So this means that even if you're feeling fine, or if you're around people who are feeling fine, you and the other person may be infected and able to infect others. So more than ever, we need to take universal precautions because we need to assume that even if we feel fine, we could be infected and are able to infect others. The same holds true for those that we interact with. Others could be um, without symptoms and still be able to spread the virus. Staying home and social distancing, if you must be out for um, essential services, become even more important in light of this new research. And because of this, we are also recommending the use of face coverings. Um, we're recommending that um, everybody, um, whenever you're leaving your home to procure or provide essential services, either in public or in private settings, to wear a clean cloth face covering at all times. Medical masks, which include N95 and surgical masks, must be um, you know, reserved for healthcare workers or other essential workers who take care of people who are sick or of the, for those who are sick. Um, I'd like to thank LA County um, community, including all of you, for doing all you can to slow the spread of COVID-19, even in the face of increasing numbers and sometimes frightening news reports you continue to um, you know, follow our recommendations and we thank you because you are making a difference in saving lives and preventing deaths. Thank you. I'm gonna learn how to do this. Thank you so much, Kristen. We'll come back to you with questions. Next, we're going to hear from Jose Huerta, the superintendent of Local District East. Thank you so much. And I think Josh is gonna help me with a screen shot of our schools at this time. 
But uh, I want to thank everyone, especially Jackie. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to be able to, to reach out to our community. I know it's, uh, they're, they're anxious to hear from us. And, and this is a good day for, for that. I really want to take this opportunity to thank all of our teachers, all of our principals, all of our parents and our students during these difficult times. It's been very challenging. And it's a, it's a moment, it's something that occurred that we were not expecting. And the flexibility and patience that you've all demonstrated has been really, really amazing. So just bear with us, we're gonna do the best we can. If you look at our screen, these are the schools at Local District East, myself, we, we supervise. These are the schools that uh, Jackie represents, if you look at them. In case you didn't know what uh, Local District East represented, these are the schools. You see, we have many, many schools. But I have to tell you, I'm very, very proud to say that we've been having the meal distribution uh, opportunities for, for, our, for our parents to come in and, and get, uh, receive a meal for their families. And it's been very successful. At this point, I'm, I'm proud to say that in these schools that you see listed up here, the, the, the centers in Jackie's, uh, where she represents in her district, in local district east, we have served more than 605,000 meals. So that's an, uh, that's, an, that's an amazing number. And I've been able to be out there and I've seen many of you and I'm very happy to see you there. I'm, I'm really grateful when you say hi to me, when I get to see you, you share some of your stories and, and just know that we're here to serve you. And on top of that, we, we also have um, electronic device distribution and that's on my next slide. And I wanna say that that's a work in progress. You see here that we have distributed over 13,000 devices. We still, here on the graph it says 9,000 devices still have to be distributed, but that number has gone down by 1,000, so it's like 8,200 at this point. And we, we are, we're thinking that by the 27th of April, we would have uh, distributed all the devices that are, are needed for our, for our board district five schools. Just know that the priority was the class of 2020, as you would all understand, they're the class that's gonna graduate. So we started with them and we went down to 11th grade, 10th grade, 9th grade, and so on and so forth. And so we're at the elementary level now. And uh, just know that some elementary schools have already received their devices, but that's where our focus is right now. And obviously there's some, some students in the different schools that for one reason or another haven't received their devices, we're gathering that information and we're able to, we're gonna be able to reach out and, and get those devices. I want you to know that our mission is for 100% of our students to have a device. So that's, that's what we're, we're, we're shooting for. So like I said, I wanna thank you for your patience and, and everything that you're doing for, for this to roll out successfully. Um, one more thing I wanted to share, because I know my time is limited, is that we're going to have our own town hall meeting next week on Thursday, I believe, for Southgate High Schools, the community of schools for Southgate. So we'll be able to share that information with you so that you can join us then with more, more details of what's going on with that community of schools network and all the feeder patterns. But as far as the, the, the meal distribution, I want to give you two dates. April 22nd at Ochoa, we're going to have the food bank, LA Food Bank, joining us. And that's gonna be important for you. On top of the regular distribution, LA Food Bank will be there to, to support the cause as well. And on April 30th, Southeast High School will have LA Food Bank as well too. So, you know, I wanna thank you all and I hope to see you soon and just wait for our invitation to the other Board District 5 town hall meetings that we're gonna have. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, you can ask your questions with that Q&A button while this is going on, and we'll answer them at the end of the meeting. The next person we're going to hear from is Roberto Martinez, Superintendent of Local District Central. Thank you so much. I'm uh, meeting with my colleagues. I just want to share with you, as Josh is pulling up the screen, the screen, okay. the the screen of the distribution. Just real quickly, there was a question about uh, principals having weekly. Uh, Can you speak up, Roberto? It's very hard to hear you. Sorry. So uh, we have to get very close to my face here. 
So uh, there was a question in the Q&A about uh, principals having uh, weekly Q uh, meetings with parents. We are having those. We're asking our principals to definitely have, um, to ensure that they have coffees with the principal. They continue to have some. And some of our principals are actually holding two sessions on a daily basis, uh, once, a, once a week. So they'll have one in the morning, one in the evening. Uh, Josh, if you could please pull up the screen of the distribution. The last thing as that screen is coming up, a big shout out, thank you, Josh. A big shout out to uh, a student, Lincoln Debenham from Eagle Rock High School, who reached out to Mr. Obama to do a commencement speech for the class of 2020 on a national level. So we hope, we don't know what the response is yet, but it, we do know that it has gone uh, pretty wide and far as uh, regarding uh, Twitter is concerned. Anyhow, what you have in front of you is the distribution per school at this given point in time. We have some schools that are completely, have completely given out all of their uh, devices. We really have, there's a couple mistakes. There's a school here that says Jefferson High School 522. That should be 422 when it will be completed. Uh, if, you're, if you could see the list there, uh, please know that um, if, uh, and your child needs a computer, please make sure if you have not reached out to the principal or they have not reached out to you, uh, that you need to let us know. Our number at Local District Central is 213-241-0126. We want to make sure that we hear from those parents regarding their com the computer distribution. So um, many of our schools in the green have completely given out all of their computers. There are some like Eagle Rock and Marshall High School, which have given out 90, between 90 to 95 percent. So there are some still some students who are missing in action. I just want to close by saying that um, we are having also parent trainings. Uh, we have a schedule that we're posting on our website. We have parent training so that our parents can continue to work alongside their children. And so you will also be tech savvy uh, and can be monitoring the, uh, the work that your children are doing. Lastly, um, I did want to add one more. There was a question uh, regarding novels and how many uh, novels were distributed. The majority of our elementary schools from the very get-go distributed instructional packets. The, uh, if there are novels that you would like to uh, ensure that your child has, then we can just please email us at Local District Central, go on the web. Uh, you can find our information there. We can provide those novels or some of those materials to your children. With that, Jackie, thank you so much for this opportunity. We are here to serve. Thank you as well. Uh, can you tell them how to get to your website while I then get ready for the next person? Sure. Uh, you can get to our website by going to LA Unified, uh, the school district website, go into local districts, and where local district central is at, just scroll down. That's where we are at. All right. Thank you. Cheryl Hildreth, Superintendent, Local District West, you're up. So good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you, Jackie, for this opportunity. I uh, want to take the um, time, if Josh would pull up the screen, to share um, what we're doing in Local District West, very similar to my colleagues in terms of grab and go and supporting schools. I think the only difference you'll see when the screen is posted is the number of schools, uh, Board District 5 schools in Local District West. So there are three Board District 5 schools in Local District West, as you see on the screen, all elementary schools uh, in uh, close proximity, Grant, Ramona, and Kingsley. And so with the update of the principals, they have been um, working with families and getting devices out. Uh, some started as soon as possible. So if we just start at the top with Grant Elementary, the, all of the devices at the school have been distributed and the principal was fortunate enough on the day of the closure to have distributed 425 devices. So all of the students at Grant should have their devices. 
if there is a student um, who has not uh, received a device, they were not at school on the 13th, please reach out to um, the teacher or the school and we will be sure to get that to you. At Ramona and at Kingsley, the principals, uh, Ms. Marin and Ms. Salazar, have the distributed devices to the parents that have requested them. Uh, they're not a one-to-one -one school, so they started with the uh, devices that they had, and they have reached out to the district to request uh, more, knowing that high schools uh, were the priority when distribution uh, first began. So the principal of Mar uh, Ramona, uh, Ms. Marin, is expecting to have additional devices delivered on this coming Tuesday. And then Ms. Salazar at Kingsley is expected to have additional devices delivered on the 28th. And that would be devices that they can then distribute to those families who are requesting. But again, at this time, uh, the principals have shared that they have been able to get them out to those who have um, requested, knowing that there are some families who were able to make sure their students have access on their own. Um, we're just so appreciative of the support of our administrators. And thank you, Jackie, for giving us this opportunity to let parents know what's happening at their schools in local District West. And as Mr. Martinez shared, if you go on the website, lausd.net, local districts, you will be able to find any of the six local districts and we will be more than happy to assist. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from Allison Yoshimoto Tauri, the Chief Academic Officer of LAUS. Hi, thank you um, Board Member Goldberg and um, to all of our superintendents who've spoken. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to, to say thank you to all of our parents out there. I know that this situation has um, brought a new experience for all of you, um, being a parent myself, it's been quite quite something. So um, thank you for that. I did wanna share some examples today of what you might be able to find. We're all very, very busy. Um, and I wanted to actually take you, um, I can't share my screen, but perhaps I can in just a moment. Um, on the website, we have many uh, resources available for our parents, our families, and our administrators, anywhere from um, the hotline, the uh, PBS schedules. Um, in Los Angeles, we started um, what is now in all 50 states across the country, um, 12 hours of programming on our PBS stations, um, KECT, -K -E KLCS, and PBS SoCal. And, um, we wanted to ensure that students had access to uh, quality programming, even when um, we weren't, until we had devices in all students' hands. Um, and also um, on our website, um, if it's possible, I'd like to be able to share my screen. Um, I think I need to be made a host. But um, you can share your screen now. Thank you. So, no, that's okay. Try one more time. I just changed it. Okay, there we go. Thank you. So, on the home page, if you go to the website that our superintendents had mentioned, it's www.lesc.net. It takes you here, and um, there's what we call a splash page with pictures. You have to click on this little arrow, and it takes you to different topics so if you know of people who need to have food we do have the 63 sites open day daily that continue to serve about 420 to 30,000 meals a day um, to anyone who drives up no questions um, for instructional supports you can see here in english and in spanish we have all of the materials our hotlines here if you need to call and you want to request a device for your family uh, a district issued device, all you need to do is call this hotline number here and someone will be able to take your order over the phone. And that, uh, your, your request will then be uh, routed to your school so your school will be able to call you 
um, and get the device to you. This could be a computing device. It could also be a connectivity, a hotspot for internet access. Um, and then of course there's a, a call, a line for employees. And I know we have many employees on the call tonight as well. And our heartfelt gratitude to, to all of our phenomenal LESD employees. Here's our family resource guide here that's downloadable in English and Spanish. And in it has many of the uh, resources that I'm gonna show you in just a moment. Um, I know Tony, our Chief um, of Special Education and Student Health and Human Services will talk in a moment about mental health. Here's your PBS guide and your schedules. And you can download those each week. They're updated every Saturday. So you can see the following week's schedule. Here um, for students, we have many of their logins. So in instruction, when we were in school, um, as a parent, our students were at school all day long. So now that they're in school remotely at home, part of their instruction is going to be um, many times is going to be delivered, you know, through the computer, uh, through software, or reading, or a Zoom call with their teacher. Um, and part of it is going to be independent and assignments that they're working on. And we call that synchronous and asynchronous. So live and something that can be done while not being live. And it's similar to what's being done in the classroom when a teacher gives a direct instruction lesson and then has students work independently or in a center. And so, but it does take an adjustment for our students. Um, and so helping our students with schedules, getting them up on time, getting them to, you know, take a shower in the morning, whatever their regular routine was, change their clothes, get out of their pajamas, have a good breakfast is always very important um, when the routine changes like it has for so many of us. Um, I do want to point out our parent resources and these in particular are our free resources online. And if you click right here where it says free resources, you will get a flyer that looks like this. It's in English and in Spanish. And particularly this link right here at the bottom where it says free resources. Here is where everything that we've collected as the district lives. And it's 14 pages of free resources for our educators as well as our parents and our students to be able to use um, at home to continue learning. And you'll see science, math. We have virtual field trips listed here. Um, the ones with the little asterisks are the ones that we spawn, you know, that we have agreements with as a district. And so you can see here, there's practice tests. And I don't wanna go through the 14 pages, but um, again, this is available directly from our website. And um, the other last thing I did want to share with you is that there is on the website an ITD flyer. This is for our educators as well as our families, but how to also get free internet access if you would like it. Um, you don't have to rely on the district for a hotspot. You can also get it from any one of these companies or any one of these ways um, they're offering free hot, free internet essentially right now. Um, so with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and just wanted to share additionally that we um, are, we have eight weeks left of the school year and we wanna make use of every moment of it. So we, our teachers are continuing to learn. Uh, you may have heard that in our agreement with our teachers union that um, teachers have a schedule that they're going to share with families, um, but that they're, our teachers are also going through transition. So our teachers are learning how to get online. They're learning how to um, conduct a Zoom conference like this. And so they're being coached and they're working together. Um, you will see on our website also and each Monday at 11 o'clock, our teachers, we're highlighting teachers that are sharing their practices with one another and with the community. Um, in Mr. Butner's um, Monday speech at 11. And um, we just encourage you to, to share with us. We have an, a district suggestion box at suggestions at lusd.net. Um, and you know we check that box regularly and also can get back to you. And the last thing I'll share for our youngest learners and our English learners, um, we will be sending home a workbook uh, in the coming weeks to all of our elementary school students. They will get it in the mail. 
So it'll be a, like a, a summer gift for, for them, but it'll be a workbook to continue their studies. Um, and our English learners um, in all grades will also be getting materials to use with their families at home to help with language uh, production and um, conversation starters. And uh, our earliest learners, our preschool students, um, we will have ways to um, get materials out to them as well. So thank you very much. And again, uh, contact us at suggestions at leosd.net. Thank you. Oops, says I'm muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. Ah, thank you so much for the third time. And finally, we're going to hear from Tony Aguilar, who's the Chief of Special Education Equity and Access for the whole district. Um, and he's going to make a brief presentation. When he's done, I've gotten a bunch of questions already. I'm going to start uh, reading questions and then telling uh, and asking various people on our panel to answer them. So, Mr. Aguilar, you're on. All right. Well, thank you, Board Member Goldberg. It's been a pleasure to be, to be here tonight. And actually, thank everyone for uh, echoing the words of Superintendent Huerta for your patience as we go through this and know that we're all in this together. You know, um, our local district leadership and our superintendents and our chief academic officer, you know, we're all kind of lockstep together on this and trying to make sure that we're supporting all of our families. Uh, so overseeing the departments of uh, student health and human services, as well as special education, I want to start off by saying, you know, as we get into this new um, new reality and, and, and the impact it has on so many of us, especially our families, our students, you know, um, there we feel the most the, the biggest need and, and want and desire to stay connected with our school community. And for that reason, on April 1st, we did launch our mental health hotline. So I just want to have a quick plug and just let you know if you really do need to connect with somebody or talk to somebody or, or, or understand that there are people here that can um, support. We have resources um, to make sure that we stay connected with you. And that phone number is 213-241-3840. And I'll share my screen in a little bit. And this will be something also that will be posted on our division's website. And I'll also share with board member Goldberg so she can also have it on available for um, her constituents as well. Um, for just want to say that for special education, we are working hard again, working with our local district leadership. Thank you for their leadership as well as the special ed administrators working with them, ensuring that all of our students um, have connected with their teachers and or providers to make sure that they too are part of the academic program that's supported by all and the vision for, for everyone. So the devices that go to students are for all students. So our students with uh, special education are those that have different access and supports with resources and teachers and providers and making sure that they'll be able to get that right now. So with, with that, I also kind of want to highlight the fact that, uh, and, and tip my hat to Superintendent Martinez and Board Member Goldberg regarding Garbanza. As Allison had just mentioned, every Monday Superintendent uh, kind of brings to light some of the promising practices at our school sites and at what's going on in, in regarding this distance learning. And at Garbanza Elementary, it was highlighted, we had two amazing teachers for special education and our general education teachers that are collaborating to make sure that they're offering a synchronous uh, education for our students and interacting with them. And it, it's definitely something that we wanna mark and continue to celebrate. So wanna make sure that continues. And with that, I do wanna be um, as brief as possible, but before I do that, just wanna share my screen real quick. So hopefully I have that access. Yes, I do, thank you. Um, again, we wanna make sure that we are connected with all of you as best as we can. So what you see here is we have all of our local district special education support unit numbers. And so we wanna make sure that everyone has that. So wherever you reside, but more importantly, there's that last number that we have there, the special education call center, that 213-241. 6701. If you just don't know where to call or maybe that no one's answering a certain line or whatever number you have is just not working, please call there. We can definitely um, be able to track that person that you want to reach or maybe that school that we want to make sure we're connecting with. So if you have any questions, please make sure to, to use our special education call center. Um, also, we also, on our special education website, we have a, an array of parent resources and also some frequently asked questions. So wanna make sure that you access that and that's available in multiple languages. So please make sure to come by and, and uh, see those resources that are there. But if all else fails, again, 
please reach out to us using our special education call center. So with that, I will sh stop sharing my screen and hand it over back to board member Goldberg. Nope, didn't work. Thank you very much. I think we're okay now. Uh, so now I'm going to start with our questions. And you know, I want to just first before I do that, I want to thank all of you panelists for taking your time. I know that all of you have worked hard all day already. And I truly appreciate your making yourselves available to do this uh, for my constituents so they can get some questions answered. The first question I have was, was from our, one of our Spanish speaking listeners. How can LAUSD guide administration and teachers to create a united and cohesive learning experience for, a, for one school? And Allison, I'm gonna ask you to try to take that on. I think what they're trying to get at is everybody's doing something different at their kid's school. How can, it, should we be having a united and cohesive learning experience at that school? And if so, who's supposed to make that happen? Thank you, I'd be happy to talk to that one. Um, and I know, um, speaking also for some of our local district superintendents who work so hard every day to support our principals and our administrators and our teachers. Um, like I said earlier, this is a growing experience for all of us. Um, I wanted to say that we did offer 10 hours of professional development to all of our teachers, our certificated staff, which means uh, it could be a teacher or a support person that's outside of the classroom supporting teachers, um, our administrators as well. And we just announced today that we're also offering uh, an additional 30 hours of a, call, a certificate actually called a future ready certificate um, to help even that playing field about teaching new strategies, um, how to go online. And that's the other reason we highlight teachers every week is because we wanna share those promising practices and each of our local district superintendents are going to be helping us identify those um, promising practices that are occurring everywhere um, to, to learn. I learned something new today watching a teacher teach a lesson. Um, and I learned something yesterday watching a different teacher teach. So I think it's, it's that time where we're really coming together as an educational community to coach each other and, and do our best to, um, to, to even the playing field for all of us. Thank you. Next question is what will happen to children, I guess this is probably one for you, Tony, who need additional supports uh, for the work that's being sent home? How do they get that? So great question. And I wanna piggyback a little bit off of the previous question too, because it ties into it. So as you know, um, we wanna make sure that students have that individualized attention. So our teachers and our service providers are connecting with families. So there are often times where you know, the different, the different modes of, uh, you know, delivering service, whether it be a combination of live video, recorded video, consultation, phone calls, we take that into consideration on how we're providing that service for families. Now, if a student does need extra support and he has, it has been identified with an IEP, their service provider and their case manager is connected one to, to, the, uh, to the student and the parent. And if they're in a gen ed setting, they'll be connected with the gen ed teacher as well. And we wanna make sure that they're, there are opportunities for them to access the core curriculum. So there are supports and strategies that we can build in uh, to make sure that the students' needs are being met in this environment. Good. I'm gonna ask actually any and all of the uh, superintendents to take this one on. Since teachers are working four hours a day, is it possible for them to divide their Zoom classrooms into smaller groups so that students can get more individual attention? So, Anybody who wants to. Yes, I, can you hear me? So one of the things that we're learning about Zoom is that there are ways to do breakout rooms also. So I think part of the training for our principal, for our teachers that Allison and the uh, Division of Instruction has established as part of their training for Zoom and Schoology is how to actually uh, be able to do breakout rooms. But I think that's also a question for Allison that uh, she might be able to answer that. So we're discovering, it depends on the platform, how uh, teachers are breaking up that time, uh, which platform it is that they're using to actually uh, provide uh, more one-on-one -on -one instruction. Also, I wanna add that there is a, there is a, um, a, a, the continuity learning 
uh, has been established for our paraprofessionals. So our, we're expecting our paraprofessionals to also get involved uh, to assist in the teaching and the instructional component uh, with children. Uh, any of my colleagues or Allison, I think you might want to add to that. Sure. Um, I know I go ahead. I think you um, hit it hit it on the nose in terms of uh, what can be done. Both the la two of the last three teachers I spoke to um, are doing small group instruction over um, over Zoom and over the web conferencing because it's just more manageable. Um, for student for students depending on their level of maturity it's um their distance learning takes a level of maturity right because you have to pay more attention you don't have that close proximity and so teachers are finding that it's easier to manage um, a smaller group than it is to have a group of 25 um, or 30 students on at one time and if you look at a zoom screen and you look at the gallery view you usually can see about 12 students at a time. And so they like to be able to see everybody that they're, they're working with. But, but just like on a regular day uh, before school closures, teachers have um, ways of working that work better for them depending on their teaching style. And so there are, this is our fourth week um, on school closures. So they're, fine, they're starting to get into a rhythm of what really feels good and matches their teaching style also. So. Um, so thank you for your patience with all of us as we're learning a steep learning curve. Um, and I, you know, welcome anyone else to, to respond to that one as well. But we're well I'm going to just kind of expand on it a little bit. One person asked, can LAUSD ensure that teachers check in virtually with class at least once a week for 20 or 30 minutes? Can we do that or not? Uh, how about let's try Jose Huerta on that one. Yeah, you're you're saying that if they can they can go virtually. Well, that depends on the schedule the teacher has set up, Jackie. You know, there's very creative ways of doing this 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 new t type of teaching where it's uh, live online, and uh, teachers are getting trained because this came at us quickly, unexpectedly. So we're really hurrying up, and we're doing a lot. There's a lot of PD for teachers, but you have to remember. Uh, uh, we this is a, a learning curve for all of us and so once everything gets settled down and the training takes place I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities for our children and so right now teachers are doing an amazing job in reaching out to the students and we're really proud of that but any support they may need we're going to continue giving them that but they aren't required are they to meet at least once a week for 20 or 30 minutes with their classes Allison do you know the answer to that if they're required Go ahead, Allison. Um, so with our um, agreement with our teachers, uh, teaching partners, it's not required to do live teaching because there's many ways teachers can engage students. Um, we are encouraging everyone to try it and to learn how, and we're coaching each other and people are getting comfortable. I talked to a different teacher today who said he hasn't tried to do a live web conference yet, but he's going to try it this week. So, and it's because he was working with his teaching partner who's, who's helping him. So, um, you know, again, we're, we're working together to, to have that live interaction um, as best as possible, but it's not required at this time. Phone calls, emails, what is required is three office hours per week and, um, and a schedule so parents know when um, phone calls will be made. Or, so you should have a schedule, you should get a schedule soon if you haven't already, but about when can you reach out? When is the teacher available? So three one-hour office hours um, is something that you should look forward to. Thank you. Okay, now here's one for me. Can we have middle school culmination ceremonies in small groups in August? I hope so. I'd like to have high school graduations in August in small groups. You know, you could do the A through Gs and the H through Ks, you know, like we used to do when we handed out diplomas. So I don't know, uh, I don't really have an answer for your question that, to whoever asked this, but I'm certainly hoping that we're gonna do that because I know how important graduation is and eighth grade culmination is as well. So I don't know if we can, but we're gonna try. Okay, next question. Uh, still no question, oh no, hold on, hold on. sorry. Mom, 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 mom. What happened to the partnership with LAUSD and Verizon? I have no idea who to give that to. Probably you, Allison. 
So um, the Verizon partnership um, is in place and Verizon has um, given us the hotspots, many of the hotspots that we purchased, that actually that were given to us were from Verizon. And so when you call and request a hotspot and you get one um, that was given to, you know, as part of that partnership, um, the partnership also is data plans. So if a younger student gets an iPad, there is a data plan that has automatic internet connection in that iPad, that would be a Verizon um, data plan to go with that. And so it's, it's there, you just you know, may not have the word Verizon on it or may not see it, but, um, but certainly it's there. We do have other equipment from a few other companies also because in areas of the city or the county that aren't covered by the, um, the um, Verizon umbrella, we wanted to make sure that, that everybody had coverage. What kind of support are special education students receiving, Mr. Aguilar? So individualized educational programs, definitely the supports that are in there. So if they have, um, let's say they're, let's, let's take for example, a student who's in resource, that means they have a case carrier, that, that student works with a gen ed teacher and a resource teacher. So that support would continue. However, we might have a teacher who's in the resource pro, I mean, a student who's in the resource program, but also has a related service such as adaptive PE. That resource provider, service provider will also check in with, with the student and, and provide an opportunity for service interaction with them. So it's something that's ongoing, but it all pertains in a specific to the IEP for the student. While you're up, yes, yeah, stay up because the next one's for you as well. My daughter was going to get evaluated by a school psychologist. How is that going to happen now? So that is a um, that is a reality that we're dealing with. We have a lot of IEPs that were on the queue that require assessment, and as a result of the safer at home orders, it's it's an impact for us to not be able to do that. So what we have what we have all our APIS is doing at our school sites is already kind of or all the assistant principals who oversee special education is already have a plan of action to make sure we can get these on queue and get them going to be able to get our students assessed and evaluated to determine whether or not they um, qualify for special education services. Okay. Um, how do you help students with IEPs transition to middle school when they haven't reclassified as English language learners? There's a good question. Oh. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe Allison and Tony could take this one on. Go ahead, you Allison, I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback. Yeah. So um, we, we are actually working with the state um, to determine the reclassification criteria, given that our normal criteria is going to be not as usable this year because we're not going to be doing state assessments. So that is something that we're actively pursuing um, and finding ways to have a plan to be able to reclassify students. So we are working with the state on that. So here's another one for you, Allison. Will students have to repeat the school year? Will special education students receive extra help? Will they have to repeat the school year? So we're not looking at retention right now as a strategy for students. Um, the, we're looking at summer school for, um, we usually do not, have not offered summer school for all students, but we are looking into how we can provide summer school for um, students that want to attend that would either be uh, small group intensive instruction during summer school or um, enrichment type summer school for students um, and, and both of those um, although we are planning for online summer school at this time um, and so for our students with disabilities we are definitely also monitoring their progress and, and towards goal attainment so our service providers and teachers would be able to know wh where they are upon returning Will we be given permission to hold IEP meetings for students? This person has two culminating students whose IEPs are on hold. So we are, we are currently phasing in, uh, having an opportunity to do what's called a virtual IEP. We are going through the professional development process right now for our staff to be able to deliver this. We are also having a, um, we're gonna have some parent workshops and trainings to also get them uh, prepared to, to conduct these, to be able to have the opportunities to re-engage our families, to have these IEPs, such as those matriculation IEPs that you're, you speak of. What is the plan, and this I would say maybe for the superintendents as well as Allison, what is the plan for helping students to catch up when they actually can return to school? 
That that's a good question, and I think that that's um, that intensified instruction that is in play on a normal day. That in this case, it's going to be all of our students that are going to need the extra boost. We know that there's a summer slide typically during the summer where kids are off for 10 weeks. And then we start back the school year with intensive review in the first six weeks to ensure kids are back on track and catching up and remembering what they had at the end of the school year. Um, we're gonna have to do that really intensively for maybe longer this time, right? And ensure that our students have um, as much intensive instruction that could be increased duration, it could be more frequency, it could be smaller groups um, and thinking about um, maybe extending the reading period um, longer, integrating uh, music and art into reading or social studies and science in, you know, reading in like through the curriculum and in different ways like that. We'll have to be um, really creative and thoughtful about how we do that for all of our students um, next year, which is really just good practice on a normal day. Uh, we'll how are community reps supporting our parents right now? Superintendents, I'm gonna ask you to answer that one. This is uh, Jose Huerta, Noco District East. Uh, and, and the situation, and I think all of my colleagues will agree, our PACE administrators are having PDs with our community reps and coming up with some strategies on how they can support parents and, and even the principals at the school sites. So that's a work that's gonna, you know, it's evolving, it's gonna get to a better place. But just know that those meetings are, are happening right now. They, they started last, two weeks ago and uh, we're gonna improve all that communication and, and the support. I wanna add, Sim, uh, as I mentioned earlier, on our website for Local District Central, there is a schedule. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Sorry, I wanna repeat that. Uh, in Local District Central on our website, you can access the schedule of courses that are being offered this week and next week, I believe in May. So uh, we want our louder, louder. Parents, we want our parents to log into Local District Central's website to ensure that they uh, can see the schedule of courses being offered specifically for them. Okay, along the same line, so Roberto, we need you to speak up next time. Uh, how is money allocated for parent centers currently being used? Is it possible for community reps to provide workshops and resources online? Any superintendent want to take that one on? Yeah, so what we, uh, in terms of the funding, it's, it's really about making sure that our community reps are trained to one, not only uh, share the information for a workshop, but making sure that we are able to train our community reps to use the distance learning platforms. And so as Mr. Huerta mentioned, that is one of the things we're asking our PACE or our parent administrators in each local district to work with the community reps to begin to uh, create a system to roll out parent workshops. So I hope you can hear me now. Yeah. Yes, okay. So right now also community reps are working alongside the PACE administrators. They are being provided with the resources uh, online. So they are also doing PowerPoints. PowerPoints are available for them. So they themselves are leading the learning efforts for our parents. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Kristen, I finally got one for you. For uh, most advanced countries are trying to open schools, especially elementary schools, in the first wave of easing restrictions. What is the LA County position on us opening preschool and elementary schools? So right now, um, we're still looking, you, you know, to see which ones. We know that um, we have to relax some of the orders, but um, we're looking at data. We're making sure some pieces are in place to ensure that, um, you know, there's going to be um, uh, continue uh, preventive measures so that we don't um, increase, you know, the number of COVID cases that we see. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna, um, as soon as we figure those things out, we're gonna um, provide guidelines for, for schools. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that's a question everybody wants to know is when can we go back? <laughs> but that's I think right. it's gonna be a while yet, right, Kristen? 
we have to be careful um, before, of course, we all want that to happen. We want our students to continue to learn. Um, we don't want people isolated. That's why we encourage, you know, other um, online learning and other kinds of, um, you know, social interaction. Uh, but we also want to keep our community protected, safe and healthy. Will summer school be required of all students? Anybody? So by law, we cannot require summer school. Um, it's not compensatory, but we can certainly strongly encourage it. And so we're gonna strongly encourage uh, our students to take advantage of the learning opportunity. Um, as an earlier question had asked, you know, are students gonna be ready for the next grade? We want our students to take advantage of all of the learning opportunities out there. Why are we not doing instruction for classrooms by cell phones since every student seems to have one? Many of our students are actually on cell phones, um, connecting uh, to many of the programs that I showed earlier. Um, a lot of the web conferencing can happen via a cell phone. Um, and some of our providers have given more data to, our, to the parents' cell phones as well, uh, free data packages or extended data packages. Um, so, so yes, it can. When in the summer will we know the plans for next fall? I'll answer that one. I don't know. Well, I will be less facetious. We do rely heavily on the county health department to tell us when it is okay for students and teachers to get near each other again. Uh, when they say it is time for us to look at reopening schools, we will re begin reopening them. My understanding is, is that it may be in staggered times. It may be some grades on one day, some grades another day. My understanding is, is that even when we begin to reopen schools, we will be, we will be social distancing nonetheless. Um, is, that, is that what your understanding is, Kristen? Yes, the new normal will be different. Um, so, so once we, we you know, um, we provide recommendations, um, as long as there's no treatment yet or no vaccines, we have to continue to be careful. So even if we allow, when we allow um, the schools to reopen, um, it will be different. It will look different, in, um, including some of the, you know, strategies that you've already mentioned. Here's one I don't know who will answer. Uh, the district called this person and told them that if they use Amazon, that they, Amazon may share the information if they give them a device. Is that a scam? No, that's not a scam. Um, last night, there was a call that went out um, rather late, so our apologies for that, um, that had asked parents if they would share their information with Amazon so that Amazon can ship headsets or a device to them. Um, the district does not share your information with companies. Um, and we take that very, very seriously. And so we um, wanted parents' agreement before uh, sending that, and before sending the shipping the headsets out because Amazon has their own privacy policy. So it, um, all of our high school students we would be getting headsets because we know that it can be um, hard to study and hard to focus at home. And so the first um, wave of headsets was gonna be delivered by Amazon to parents um, at the home. But again, we did not wanna share uh, addresses without a parent's permission. So that was the- I see, I see, the purpose okay. Of that. I think they were afraid they were gonna get into everything was going on in their home or something. Yeah, okay. That, that was the purpose of that call. And again- Here's no a question. Go ahead. Here's a question I'd like uh, all of our uh, superintendents to take on. What emotional supports are we offering students and staff right now? Just uh, start with Mr. Martinez, Mr. Huerta, and Ms. Hildreth in any order. What are the emotional supports we are offering students and faculty and everybody else now? The, the best place for emotional supports for children, of course, is at home and how we're interacting, how we're training our parents and ensuring that our parents have the tools to deal with those uh, concerns at home. But there's also a lot of interaction going on between teachers where there's live sessions going on 
checking in. I saw a video of a teacher doing uh, PE, doing uh, exercise. So we know that exercise is one way of helping with emotional support. And of course, ensuring that children have access to any adult should they have uh, some concerns. So I think also Tony might want to chime in when it comes to the PSW supports that are in place. For teachers, of course, we know that the district has guidelines, has ways for teachers to reach out. We have, um, hot, we have lines of communication where teachers, in the event of any emotional support they might need, but really, more than anything, it is that communication of staying well, staying abreast of what is happening between an administrator and the teachers and ensure that they are doing well mentally and physically. Yeah, and I'll, I'll kind of piggyback off of that a little bit. Thank you, Please. Uh, Superintendent. Um, so absolutely, this is about, um, you know, during this time, it's about listening. I think that's probably the most important thing we can do right now. Uh, when we established the mental health hotline, we were very clear that that hotline is for our students, our families, and our staff. Um, this is an unusual time, and we want to make sure that we are connected with our school community. On any, on any given uh, quote-unquote normal, normal year, we service over 30,000 students um, in, in, in mental wellness and, and, and well-being. So we want to make sure that we ha not only have that access, we have our counters already kind of connecting with those families and those students, but we also have a direct line to be able to make a phone call because when they're, they're in our schoolhouses, they're with us every day, a teacher can make a, a connection with that student. But right now, not having that connection, we want to make sure that there is somewhere they can go. And okay. since they all have cell phones, I agree, this is a great opportunity for them to be able to connect. Okay, we have 155 more questions, and I'm going to ask people to stop writing them because we're not going to get to all of those already. And I hate to discourage anybody, but probably makes no sense. Uh, when will parents receive training and support on technology, and from whom? We are actually going to be announcing shortly um, webinars like this for parents that you can join um, depending on, you know, where you are as a learner and maybe a topic that you're interested in sharing. So please stay tuned for that in one of our Monday updates with the superintendent. So. Very good. We also got a lot of questions about grading. So what's going to happen with grading? I can take that one also. Um, grading, um, the state, California Department of Education um, left grading up to be a local decision, but did give options. They gave options such as uh, pass, no pass, these are secondary, pass, no pass, credit, no credit, or modified A to D scale. Um, in LA Unified, um, we did decide on a modified A to D scale for secondary students, which means that um, and it's a no F uh, policy for, second, for the second semester for our students. Um, but it does mean that if a student gets a D, we are going to strongly, strongly encourage and, and enroll them in summer school because, um, again, it's about the learning. And um, it's going to take some adjustment because, you know, many of us are used to relying on grades. Um, I know when I was growing up, I, I would get uh, in trouble by my parents if I didn't get a good grade. And so um, we don't want grades to be a punishment. We do want the focus to be on what do I get out of a great education? Um, and so our teachers are in the, the kind of transition right now of explaining that to students, why it's important to stay engaged, why it's important to participate and learn. And, um, and many of our teachers are doing project-based learning where kids are solving a problem right now together uh, virtually and, and really engaged at a deep level. At the elementary level, grades will be um, a two through four. Um, and the, and we will be, again, supporting students in the learning piece of that. But we really wanted to have a hold harmless policy that is something that was part of the California Department of Education guidelines, that no student should be punished um, for lack of having internet, lack of having um, a computer or a device, and not being able to be engaged. And we continue to reach out every day. We know which students have not logged on since uh, school's closed and we're now again going on our fourth week. So we know them by name and by phone number and we're reaching out our PSA counselors, our PSW counselors, our teachers, our administrators, we're reaching out to reconnect students every day and um, ensuring that, um, you know, that, that 
everyone stays connected and, and gets connected. So um, there will be information for parents on grading also um, coming out shortly uh, as that policy was just announced. Good, good, good. I haven't heard from my principal since March 16th. When am I going to hear from my principal? Super superintendents? I think that's a great question. I think, well, it's it's sporadic. You know, some principals are, are sending out BBC Connect messages to their principals. And uh, we're going to, to our parents, I'm sorry, to our families. And we're going to be hosting a couple of principal meetings this week. So I will bring that up and encourage them to reach out to the families. Uh, you know, through a letter, possibly through a, B a BBC, a Blackboard Connect message, because I think it's really important for for all of us to connect during the, this time. I, you know, Anybody I'd like else? To, I'd like to give a shout out to Stephanie Leach at Eagle Rock Elementary School, who had three coffees with the principal today, has another one tomorrow. So there are, it, like uh, Jose said, it's sporadic, but we are encouraging all of our principals to have at least one weekly coffee with the principal. As a matter of fact, we had a principal yesterday who, I don't know, wife's coffee should have been dinner at 6 p.m. met with her parents uh, yesterday. Um, so we're encouraging all of our principals to do that. And they're going to get them on board. Thank you for pushing us in that direction. Kristen, another one for you. Everybody seems to be talking about relapses and new, new infections in the fall. What do you say about that? So yes, there's been news about that. Um, that's why I think it, it is possible. That's why I think it's very important that we continue with the strategies that we that are already in place. Um, as we start, um, you know, relaxing the safer at home order, we know that there's going to be more interactions with the public, uh, including those that are potentially um, infected with COVID-19. So we have to um, continue to, you know, be vigilant and take precautions so that um, it doesn't um, go back to that, you know, where we're seeing increasing cases that we're not able to manage. We don't want to, you know, start uh, closing uh, things again after we've opened it. Uh, we don't want to get to that point. That's why um, uh, before we make those recommendations, we're being careful. We want to make sure that the um, all of the pieces are in place for us to um, be able to maintain, um, you know, flattening the curve. Uh, Tony, is the service provider like a speech therapist required to reach out to their cases? My son hasn't heard from his. Absolutely. So if the student has a speech provider in their IEP, um, they should have already connected with them uh, via phone call at the, at the very least. And if not, um, if they can please just call that our hotline number to be able to to connect to that. Um, that's two one three two four one six seven zero one. We'll be able to um, say that again more slowly, please. Two one two one three two four one six seven zero one, and we'll be able to uh, to direct that because uh, we want all of our service providers to be able to connect with our with our students. And here's one I know that a lot of parents are asking. How can you help us in dealing with our children who are so frustrated? I'm going to answer that one. <laughs> there is no good answer to that. This is a frustrating experience for us all. I mean, I would much rather be meeting with all of you in a, some building in a big auditorium in a town hall where I can hug you as you come in and say hello and goodbye and we can be friends and enjoy some camaraderie, but we can't do that. And I'm frustrated, and I know your kids are frustrated. They're frustrated because they miss their friends, they miss the social life of school, they miss their teachers. I had one little girl write to me and say, please have my teacher call me, I miss her so much. So, you know, this is a hard time. I would simply say to parents, and maybe this is the wrong advice, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. If your kids are really struggling with having to sit down at a computer and work, give them a break. Tell them you know this is hard. Tell them they can come back to it later, but they must come back to it later because really it is not easy. And a lot of our parents are working from home. So they're working from home and have one, two, three, five kids who all need help with something. This is not an easy situation. I just hope that we can find ways to make it easier and easier for parents 
uh, because I can tell you, I just wouldn't want to be doing this with small children and having to work from home as well. Anybody else want to comment on that one or I'll go to the next one. Uh, I know a few schools are already doing it. This is something you've already sort of said, but can we really get all principals to do coffee with the principal meetings during this time? Superintendent, yeah, yes. can we get yes. all of them to Jackie. do it? Jackie, that is very doable. And like my colleague, Mr. Martinez mentioned, there are many schools that are doing the coffee with the principals. Uh, and uh, we're gonna continue that practice. And like I said, people are getting comfortable with this level right now and learning how to do the Zoom. I know our PACE administrators, they, 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 what they did is they trained all the community reps in our district how to work on Zoom and they're connecting with parents, but it would be nice for the principals to also join in. And I am sure they're more, they are more than willing as soon as they, but they have so much on their plate right now, but I think, I think that is very important. Like I said earlier, we all need to connect somehow with each other so that we can all feel that that we are in a good place together on the, in this. Okay, here's a teacher who says, uh, and a principal who said, can superintendents share with principals what they send to parents? Absolutely. We try to make an effort to, you know, ensure that they are on top of it and that they receive any type of information prior to us sending it to parents. There isn't anything that I can think of at the moment that we have sent to parents that we have not shared with our principals. So I'm speaking on behalf of Oakwood District Central, my colleagues, I'll allow them to chime in. Yes, uh, Jackie, you know, so our, our PACE administrators and uh, they're, they are the ones supervising a lot of that information. So I'm gonna make sure, I don't want it to fall in between the cracks of us not communicating well, but uh, I'm gonna make sure that, uh, that they know that this is a priority with with our people here. Okay, it seems from the question that they were most concerned that if you're sending something out to parents, would you include the principals too? That's basically what the question is. Yes, was. okay. Um, one question now, how do parents who don't have a computer receive the information that was discussed here tonight? Well, of course, we have phone lines, so people are listening in on phones. But I think it is a good question for all of us we have lots of things at LAUSD.net that if you don't have a computer, you are not going to be accessing. So I'm wondering if we can think of more ways to use literally snail mail if necessary or phone calls to share information because I know a lot of parents are very frustrated in my board district uh, because they don't really have access to uh, online services. I'm, I'm sent a, a note to a couple of them saying that when your kids have a device, maybe you can use the device to get access to some of these things as well. But if any of you want to make some comments, I'd be glad to hear them. Nope. Okay. So, Go ahead. So there is Google Voice. We had asked our principals to establish Google Voice. So that's one of the ways that they can communicate. <clears throat> so that's one way. But the other one is we had been tinkering with the idea of possibly doing it for YouTube. Uh, I'm not sure if you could, you could get to YouTube without a device. I know you can get to YouTube through your cell phone. So we're trying any way possible to communicate with our parents, um, you know, and recognize that th some of them do not have um, laptops or devices, but if their children has one, there's no reason why they cannot use their children's laptop once it's there at the home. Will there be emotional supports in the fall for students who have lost loved ones to this virus? So I'll, I'll take that one. I mean, if uh, we would activate all of our supports and our crisis counseling supports, just like we would with any, um, uh, with any other crisis at our school sites, so that's something that's would would definitely be addressed uh, upon reentry. But more more often than not, we would probably already know if we had students impacted right now to be able to provide some supports. And Tony, while you're there, can you once again give the phone number for people to call if they have IEP questions? Yeah. Sure, two one three two four one six seven zero one. And I just want to take this quick moment too to clarify something. Whereas 
you know, we recognize with, with special ed to the best extent possible and as a guidance of CDE, we're, we're making sure we're offering the supports we can for our students. Um, and we, whereas we are able to, um, you know, plan on holding virtual IEPs, you know, the, the one thing that we are limited because of the safer at home um, orders is assessment. So that has to be put on hold until we can be, that order is lifted and we're able to reopen schools uh, safely. Okay. Um, I know that there are now 179 unanswered questions. Uh, when we finish in a couple of minutes, my staff and I will sit down together and we will have a meeting tomorrow morning on figuring out how to answer all of them. Uh, because I believe that if you had spent the time, well, now there are 180, if you had spent the time uh, to take your time to be with us this time, we're gonna try to answer all those questions. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the best we can do. Next question is, are we gonna hire more teachers if we have to have smaller class sizes to have social distancing? I'm gonna answer that one. I have no idea how we're gonna do this. Uh, we might very well just stagger start times. We may say that on uh, some days of the week, a half of each class will show up and on different days, a half of class will show up. One of the advantages we will have by the time we actually have face-to-face -face classroom meetings is, is that all of our students will have technology. And what that means is, is that we will be able to better serve students in smaller groups, I believe, because the others who aren't at the actual classroom that day will have ways to stay involved online. And I, I, I'm hopeful that we are going to learn a lot in this period that we're in now about how to combine face-to-face in-classroom experiences with online experiences, because I agree with what Kristen said earlier. This is not, there's going to be a new normal. It isn't going to be like it was when we go back. And that being the case, we need to, and I believe we are, and Allison, I know that your group is already working on this. We're trying to figure out how to take advantage of what we're learning about distance learning to make learning continue even when we have kids back in the classroom. Allison, isn't that what's going on now? Yes, correct. Um, I, we're using this as an opportunity to, um, now that we're normalizing after four weeks, we're really using this as an opportunity to think about what are the strategies that we're, we can teach now during this period that could really help boost us um, when we do come back to school um, and use in the interim? So it, it is an opportunity uh, for us to really come together. We have a lot more questions and not much more time. I'm just gonna take the, this one last one, if I can find it again, it disappeared. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, okay, it was basically, um, what uh, what are we going to um hold on oh well i can't find it okay uh, we had questions about the cares uh legislation we have a bunch of questions about grading we have a whole bunch of questions about lots of different things uh one question i am going to take is are we going to have more town hall meetings the answer to that is yes this worked and i want to thank my staff they just knocked themselves out silly uh, doing this. Josh and Fidencio and Sharon and Ale and um, Danny and am I, who am I missing here? Um, Josh and oh, Rocio. Ros I knew I'd forget somebody doing that without notes in front of me. But they really did knock themselves out. I hope we will have an additional uh, uh, one on just special ed because a lot of questions came about that. I'd like to have one perhaps uh, on the questions of how we uh, deal uh, with what's going to happen when we go back to school. I know grading questions are still going to come up again. Yes, we will have more of these, but I wanna just close and take one minute. First of all, more than 400 people joined this at one point or another, and I wanna thank you. You've got a lot going on in your homes and yet you took the time to be involved with us, and I can't thank you enough. You know, this is what makes me hopeful that in spite of all of this mess that we're all going through, that we're gonna come out all the other end because we're gonna do it together and we're staying together. And I'm gonna close with one of Kristen's chants. Wash your hands frequently, stay at home, stay six feet apart when you go out and wear a mask, 
and be kind to each other. That's the most important. This is so trying on everybody's nerves. It is really hard. Try to find some way to have some fun together and to make, as we used to say when I was a kid, lemonade out of the lemons. And I want to close, frankly, by not only thanking my staff, but thanking Kristen Monty, Allison, Yoshimusa, Yoshimoto Tauri, Tony Aguilar, Cheryl Hildreth, Roberto Martinez, Jose Cuerta, and our wonderful translators. I think it's uh, Gabriela Davis, and I'm not sure the other name, I'm sorry. Uh, all of you, all of you made this possible. We will do this again, because I think the most important thing we can do for each other is to stay connected and to realize that we will get through this. There is an end, it's just not close. And that's what the frustration is about. We want it to be ending right now, and it's not. So I say to all of you, thank you. You honor me by your presence. You honor me. Now we got 197 questions. Oy vey. We will try to answer every last one of them, I promise you. And we will let you know when we will do our next town hall meeting. But thank you. Thank you, panelists. Thank you for everyone who is working on all of the ways to make school work. I know it is uneven. I know there are teachers calling their kids every day and other teachers who haven't called their kids at all. We are working with everyone to try to encourage them to connect as much as possible with their students because that's how we will ensure that the academic progress of our kids is not ended with this virus but continues on. Thank you all very much for joining us and thank you. Be well, be safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Good night.